Once upon a time, there was a pretty steep divide between large and small core Intel-based Chromebooks. Up to just a couple years ago, a small core Intel device with Braswell or Apollo Lake chips was a really hard recommend to just about anyone. With cheap build quality, cheap components, and painfully slow performance, I even disliked the fact that my young kids had to cope with these Chromebooks while at their elementary school. Even worse, since they were always the cheapest options, many people used these Chromebooks and thought, this is what it feels like to use Chrome OS. Fortunately, that isn't the case any longer. Affordable Chromebooks are getting better and better as time goes by, and what you can get in the sub $350 range these days completely demolishes what was standard fare just a couple of years ago. With better quality in the builds, better screens, and most importantly, better small core processors from Intel, the affordable Chromebook market is finally a place that's fun to hang out in. Let me show you what I mean. Today's video is brought to you by Visor for Chromebooks. If you're a school or a school district with a Chromebook one-to-one -one program, we recommend that you check out what Visor has to offer. Visor is a Chromebook management solution that seamlessly integrates with the Google Admin Console and your student information system so that you can easily check in and check out Chromebooks, see which student has which Chromebook, manage repairs, and even automate disabling lost or stolen devices while notifying parents all in one click. Visor really takes Chromebook fleet management to the next level. If you're interested in learning more about how Visor for Chromebooks can help your school or school district, just click the link in the description below to schedule a short demo. CTL was kind enough to send over the CTL Chromebook NL81T for us to check out, and it's a pretty standard affordable Chromebook. It's all plastic, but the build feels substantial and well-designed. The touchscreen is anti-glare, and at 280 nits, it looks great in nearly all lighting conditions. The keyboard's nice to type on, and the trackpad is plastic, but it's smooth with a satisfying click. At 14 inches, the 1080p screen is comfortable to work on, and the I.O. is all you need with a USB Type-A on either side, a single USB Type-C port, micro SD card slot, headphone microphone jack, and a full-size HDMI port to boot. All in all, I spent a solid week working every day from this Chromebook, and you know what? I didn't hate it. If I'm being honest, there were times I totally forgot I was operating from an affordable Chromebook at all. Even when I hooked it up to my QHD ultra-wide monitor, this device kept up with my daily workload. The screen was bright enough to handle my proximity to the windows, and the keyboard and trackpad was actually kind of delightful to use. There's no reality where I would have said this about an entry-level Chromebook just a few years ago, yet here we are. Now, I don't want to mislead anyone. This CTO Chromebook we're talking about has the last gen Gemini Lake Pentium Silver processor, or the N5030, 8 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, and it retails at $389 when it's not on sale. And similarly built and spec devices from other manufacturers hit somewhere in the same price range. That's not exactly low end or affordable in the Chromebook world. But it holds true that I've been equally impressed by the standard Gemini Lake Celeron N4020 processor that powers affordable Chromebooks we've done other videos about that are far more inexpensive than the CTL I was just talking about. Simply put, affordable Chromebooks are getting good. And as we roll into the middle part of 2021, we can't help but be even more excited by the promise of Jasper Lake processors from Intel. We've had some hands-on already with these processors, and the performance gains are impressive versus the Gemini Lake processor processors from just a year ago. When they start arriving, and they will be arriving soon in large numbers, we'd expect to see a wave of affordable Chromebooks that will have performance that won't hamper the experience at all. This means manufacturers are free to spend their device budgets in other ways like better screens and better build components and more RAM and storage for the same generally low prices. With all of that in play, the low-end Chromebook space is becoming more exciting than ever. Where I once despised affordable Chromebooks for their poor build quality and painfully slow performance, we're starting to see much better attention to detail and performance that doesn't degrade the Chrome OS experience. And the best part is the price. There's no reason not to expect these devices to stay in the three or $400 range and simply be better overall Chromebooks than anything we've had in this price range prior. And all of this puts pressure on the higher end Chromebooks to be better and better to substantiate their higher asking prices. It's a win-win and an evolution of the Chromebook ecosystem that I'm more excited about than nearly anything else right now. The thought of an army of sub $400 Chromebooks that feel great, look great, 
and perform great is really awesome to think about. And I think we're right around the corner from that reality playing itself out as we come into the third and fourth quarters of 2021. It's going to be a very, very interesting time in the life of the humble Chromebook. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Go down there and hit that subscribe button and make sure and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.